Hi, I'm John Ruggie. I'm sorry I can't be with you. Um, my day job at Harvard, alas, um, got, got in the way, uh, uh, as it sometimes does. But I'm, I'm very pleased to join you um, uh, virtually uh, to uh, um, launch uh, or to help you launch the, uh, the new report, Investing the Rights Way, a guide for investments um, on business and human rights. Um, I want to thank my, my colleagues at, at, at the Institute uh, for, business, uh, for Human Rights and Business, um, as well as Calvert um, and the ICCR for the work that they put into producing um, the, this very important uh, report. And I'm also encouraged to know how many of you um, are there and have participated in discussions as this report uh, was evolving. I'm very grateful to you all. This, this builds um, obviously on the guiding principles that I developed over the course of six years um, uh, um, and which the UN Human Rights Council um, in the first for the first time ever uh, uh, endorsed um, in June 2011. What I mean by the first time was that the Human Rights Council had never endorsed any kind of authoritative guidance on business and human rights. So that was a first. And the other first was that um, it had never endorsed a set of normative principles that governments didn't negotiate themselves. Um, we presented them and governments voted them up or down and I'm happy to say it was up um, and, and the up was unanimous. Uh, which, of course, gave it a, a very special um, authoritative nature, and it helped uh, introduce the ideas of the guiding principles into a whole series of, of other institutions, national um, and international. International, the International Finance Corporation, the OECD, uh, the International Organization for Standardization, the European Union, et cetera, et cetera. Nationally, um, at the EU level, um, governments are developing implementation plans um, in the United States, um, the human rights due diligence provisions um, of the guiding principles found their way into Section 1502 of Dodd-Frank. Um, in the new um, uh, reporting requirement for American investors investing in Burma, uh, the guiding principles um, are to be referenced as a benchmark uh, by any American investor. Um, investing more than $500,000. And so um, the, 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 the seeds have been planted um, in a number of places and not simply um, institutionalized uh, in the UN itself. Now, the guiding principles make it clear that, that all businesses, um, irrespective of sector, irrespective of size or where they operate, all businesses have a responsibility to respect human rights. To respect human rights means to not infringe on the human rights uh, of others as they go about their business. And businesses can know and show that they are respecting rights by um, following or, or adopting an adequate due diligence uh, procedure, um, which we outline uh, in some depth um, and, and some detail uh, in the guiding principles themselves. Now, the, the, the principles are established, they're out there. Uh, companies are acting on them, as I say, international institutions of one sort or another uh, are out there as well. But I remind you that the guiding principles themselves provide fairly high-level guidance. Um, and uh, for uh, more granular content, um, something that can be translated for um, uh, a, 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 somebody at a local site who ha has a particular decision to make, there we need to drill down further um, in terms of, of sectors. Uh, we also need to pay attention to the special um, features of small and medium-sized um, enterprises, which can't be expected to have the same systems as a large global uh, multinational. Um, so the next task, the next task is, is to go more granular. Um, and the financial sector um, is one of the areas um, in which uh, this work is now being done. Um, the, um, uh, the OECD is doing a mapping exercise of the financial sector um, in relation to uh, human rights um, issues. Um, I'm discussing with UNEP FI uh, in the context of, of some work I do with Foley HOAG, uh, looking at these issues um, for, for banks. A, the so-called Toon Group of banks 
um, is drafting um, guidance um, for the banking sector specifically. Um, and the investment community, of course, um, has and continues to be actively uh, pursuing the discussion uh, amongst themselves. The International Finance Corporation has played a significant uh, role um, in, in this context. And of course, the equator uh, banks, uh, the 80 or so banks um, uh, that uh, track the equator uh, principles um, are um, also um, hard at work um, in revising the equator principles to give recognition to recent developments in the area of business and human rights. So I'm very pleased about, about all of that. Um, now, this, this new guide that you will be discussing is the start of a process uh, of reflection for uh, investors. Uh, absolutely key players um, in, in the whole chain um, uh, of, 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 of players involved um, in, in business, in, in, in investing, um, in, in, uh, in commerce. Um, and so for, for you, some things will be the same. Um, your workers, uh, your suppliers, um, the responsibility to respect in relation to them, that's, that's the same as for any other business. Uh, but um, you also have a special relationships with investee companies, um, and, and, and that needs to be uh, clarified um, a bit um, more than it has been to date. Um, Parts of the investment community has been very active in addressing uh, particular human rights um, issues, um, uh, trafficking, conflict, minerals. What, what we're hoping to achieve now is to, is, is to encourage the development of a more systemic uh, approach, a more systemic um, uh, uh, um, development or intervention that will have cumulative effects and begin to truly move markets um, overall by uh, making human rights due diligence a regular part um, of your investment decision making um, and engagement um, with, with companies. Now, what, what, why are we doing this? Well, we're, we're doing it obviously in the first instance to um, reduce the incidence of corporate related um, human rights uh, abuses. Um, and uh, the, 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 the major tool um, adequate human rights due diligence um, is intended to, um, to, to help establish um, the, a business's social license to operate um, in addition to simply whatever legal license to operate it, it, it already has. The benefit for society is, is, is obvious. Um, as human rights challenges are reduced and managed better, uh, also, this will help rebuild trust um, in business. I'm sure you well know um, the, um, the beating that the uh, business community uh, and other social institutions, um, not the least the U.S. Congress, the beating in institutions are taking in terms of public trust. Um, and knowing and showing um, that you are managing the human rights implications of your work well uh, is one key way uh, to restore trust and to rebuild um, the social license uh, to, to operate. Now, I don't underestimate the challenges um, of, of, of doing these, um, these things um, and making them happen, uh, but um, with dedicated people um, and, and institutions like yours involved, um, I, I know that, that, that we can do it. Um, and um, so I want to thank you again for your commitment, your engagement. Um, thanks again to the Institute, to Calvert, uh, to the ICCR for providing uh, 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 this new valuable tool that we can now use uh, to build further on. And um, I, I wish you a, a fruitful conversation. Um, and if there's any way uh, down the road that I can be helpful, uh, you, you know where to find me and I would be delighted uh, to, uh, to be engaged. Thanks so much.